Yeah, starting on social media was was not easy. Um, there were many days where I would sit there, I would not make a post. I'd be I'd be so worried, and I'm sure you, you're watching this, you're in the same boat. I'm so worried about what other people think. I was so scared what people thought. I was telling you off camera <laughs> earlier that I remember posting a video and I had my first negative comment. And it was like, thanks, loser. <laughs> and again, like faceless icon, and I remember like literally I couldn't sleep and I didn't make a second post. I was so upset and I couldn't believe it. I was so discouraged by this, the idea that somebody would say something and call me a loser. I was, I was Googling like how to track down somebody's address off Instagram. I was like, I'm gonna find this person. I can't do this. And then, you know what's the worst part? I started going through my phone and be like, was it my cousin? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to one of my favorite segments, Ask Steve. This is where we scroll through my social media, we pay attention to questions and comments, and this is your opportunity to ask me questions. So I'm sitting here with the amazing Alexa. Hello. And we are doing Ask Steve segments. So she's gonna ask me some questions that have come from you, whether recently or in the past, and um, yeah, we hope you're gonna get some value out of this. Actually, we know that you're gonna get some value out of this. So, Lexa, why do you hit me with the first question? Yeah, sorry, and comment on the video for some questions. Yes. We're always collecting questions. Yes, please comment below with your questions, and uh, who knows, it just might be in the next Ask Steve. Yeah. Okay, first question. How do you keep a positive mindset when everything starts to feel like it's crumbling around you? In business, family, friendships? You know, I was gonna, I was gonna start by saying, you know, I've never felt like my world's crumbling, as if everybody's felt that way. Um, I think the most important thing is, first of all, you got to keep things in perspective, right? Um, is everything crumbling? Is your whole world falling apart? Or was it a business setback? Or was it a family setback? Like in my experience early on before I had personal development, what would happen was that if I had a relationship that wasn't going well, I'd let it bleed into all areas of my life. And I, was, I felt like, like I was literally going to die. I thought my business was going to fall apart. I felt like my health was gonna fall apart all because one area of my life was not where it needed to be. So what I've learned to do over time is uh, keep things in perspective. You've heard me talk before about compartmentalize, which means you really have to put each, each, each set of problems or each situation that you're involved with in a bucket. And you can't let your business be affected by your relationship. You can't let your relationship be affected by your health. Now, it's easier said than done, um, but it's important to keep things in perspective. And then I do what I always do. Right when I'm facing a crisis or a problem, and let's be honest, isn't life all about running from crisis to crisis? It, it's it, it's everyone's like, run peak to peak, just peak to peak. I'm like, man, it's more like valley to valley. It's more like storm to storm, right? So crisis to crisis. So you're running from crisis to crisis, storm to storm, and and obviously in the middle there, there's some there's some amazing things that are happening, but. Um, I do what I always do. I sit down, I find some time, I schedule some time to deal with that situation. I usually get with myself, I usually have a white piece of paper and I just write down you know, all the thoughts that I need to address regarding the situation. And then I play this exercise that I've done for years on what if this was easy? You know, what if, what if this problem was easy? What if the, what if the solution to this was easy? Um, and it really just helps me kind of take all the emotion out of it and kind of reset. It doesn't mean that the crisis gets solved. It doesn't mean that doesn't mean that I don't have problems. God knows I do. But when crisis hits, you got to compartmentalize. You have to you have to isolate the problem. You can't let it bleed into every other area. You got to keep showing up. Got to keep going to the gym, right? Have I showed up some days to the gym where I have a bunch of shit on my mind that I can't stop thinking about for my business? Yeah, it happens. But I still push in my workout. Mm -hmm. You know what I used to do? Just not go to the gym. So you really have to get control of the situation and push through it. Yeah, and that's where you work harder at the gym. Yeah. You're having a bad day, you right? Do. <laughs> you do, actually the other day I was, I was having one of those mornings and I was pushing my cardio so hard. <laughs> I was soaked and it was because of that. I'm trying to drown, out, high. <laughs> drown out the thought of negativity. Yeah, and there's that, I don't know who says it or where it comes from, but it's like, are you having a bad day, a bad life, or like a bad couple minutes? Whereas so many people are like, I'm having a terrible day and it's like, well, your card didn't start. 
hours ago. Okay, great. And then the next question we have is, what is the greatest failure you have ever experienced and how did you learn from it? Yeah, well, I mean, when I saw this question, I, I thought, well, I don't know what the greatest failure <laughs> was. I mean, we could sit around the fire and maybe talk about a few big ones. Probably a couple that I don't want to talk about on here. But I was thinking back and every big business failure seems like it's the biggest failure ever. Right? You think about it. 18 years ago when I got into business and I, I failed. I failed a few chapter tests on an exam. Then you get, you know, you're 23 years old, you have a relationship and you feel like you really like somebody. And then that relationship ends. And at that time, it's the biggest failure of your life. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, obviously 2009, my health fell apart. I lost eight feet of my bowel. That was a pretty big, pretty big loss in my life. But it's so interesting because as your life grows, as your business grows, as your family grows, as you're, as you're learning and, you know, life grows in general, you attract bigger problems, right? Bigger life, bigger problems, bigger business, bigger problems, bigger family, bigger problems. You have a massive family. There's going to be more family drama in a huge family mm -hmm. than if you had a, if it was just you. So it just seems like the big failures continue to roll in as your life gets bigger. Mm -hmm. And they're not necessarily, you know, big uh, compared to other people. But at the time for you, it seems big, mm -hmm. right? When, when, when you have a big business and you lose one of your top performers, that's a, that's, a, that's a big failure. But when you first get started and you fail one exam and you feel like you're gonna die <laughs> and you have a paper bag, <laughs> you gotta be cradled to sleep, the soother, it's all, pers it's all in perspective. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. It's funny to think back on some of the things that you might have worried about or like freaked out about and then didn't realize the future would be much worse. Well, sometimes. you've seen me before in the past. <laughs> And I send you an email to take, take it to, to the, the top. top. Yeah. I had a laugh when you started answering this question because I had the audacity to ask if you had any tummy issues. Oh, yeah. Have you ever had any stomach pains before? Yeah. Anyway, that was a good one. Alexa asked me if I've ever had stomach pains today. I said, <laughs> I've had Crohn's disease since I was two and I've had eight feet of bowel. I said the eight feet of bowel, if they removed, it doesn't hurt anymore. It's in a, it's in a jar somewhere. Oh university. my gosh. Okay, next question. What motivates you to keep going at your level? You know, it's funny because when I meet with young entrepreneurs, they always start, a lot, of, a lot of people get into business with the end in mind. A lot of people say, if I could just make this amount of money, if I could just build this kind of business, I'm out. I'm retired, passive income. Right, they they read the four hour work week. They want to live on a beach. They and and you know that's that's all inspirational and, and whatnot. But um, what keeps me going is 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 creating more, mm -hmm. creating more, creating more success stories in my life. Uh, you know, building my kids to a higher level. And I just feel like if I'm not in the game, if I'm not working towards something, right? Because isn't it true? Like when you're working towards something, you're constantly improving. Mm -hmm. So I, I I I I'm I'm in constant. I'm in constant mode of like improving and getting better. And I want to be a better, I really do want to be a better father. I'm not even just saying that a better husband and a better business owner. I want to build more agency owners. And yes, I'd love to make more income. Obviously there's a lot of, there's a lot of things I'd like to give back to more than I do. But what keeps me going is, is, is creating, is building, is, um, you know, it, it's, it's just never ending. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's never like, hey, you know, if I'm 45 and I'm making X amount of money with X amount of the bank, you'll never see me again. To me, that, that doesn't fire me up. Mm -hmm. That's all about me. It's how many people can I help get to where I am? How many people can I help, you know, get through all the challenges? How many people can I, can I empower? Um, I think about like my son, he's, he's 12 this year. And I think, man, like by the time he's 18, that's six years from now. What, what level could I be at six years from now? when he's going through some of the biggest challenges of life or like between 18 and 24, when you're trying to discover who you are, right? who do I want to be when he's that age? Right. And uh, man, if I just settled and, and tapped it cool and was, and was happy with what I'm at and I'm retired and I move away and I just kind of live, you know, live all about me. That doesn't inspire me. Yeah, me either. Cause I wouldn't have a job. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't have a job. Yeah. 
No, I think that's what makes you so successful mm. is that it, you're not doing it just for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes you such an amazing leader and makes people want to follow you. So you. I've got one more question. All right, let's you've, it. you've been on social media for some time now. What was it like starting out on social media? Yeah, starting on social media <laughs> was, was not easy. Um, there were many days where I would sit there. Um, I would not make a post. I'd be, I'd be so worried. And I'm sure you, you're watching this, you're in the same boat. I'm so worried about what other people think, right? I definitely wasn't those internet trolls that hops on YouTube and puts like a random negative comment um, in somebody's YouTube channel. For those of you watching who do that, I think that that's, that's just the lowest form of life in general. Um, I wasn't one of those people. Um, but what I was is I was somebody who was addicted to the approval of other people. I was so scared what people thought. I was telling you off camera <laughs> earlier that I remember posting a video and I had my first negative comment. And it was like, thanks, loser. <laughs> and again, like faceless icon, like random, <laughs> random handle. And I remember like literally I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. I, I wasn't sure if I needed someone to like rock me to sleep. Um, I was drinking nighty night tea to like try and forget about it. Um, days would go by, weeks would go by, and I didn't make a second post. I was so upset and I couldn't believe it. It's like the moment I realized Santa Claus wasn't real. I was so discouraged by this, the idea that somebody would say something and call me a loser. I was, I was Googling like how to track down somebody's address off Instagram. I was like, I'm going to find this person. I can't do this. Is, is this person like local? And then, you know what's the worst part? I started going through my phone and be like, was it my cousin? You know what? My best friend and I, we didn't have the best conversation a week ago, was it them? Is it somebody on my team? And uh, that was my start. That's how I got started. And I almost did make a second post. It's true, but then I, you know what? I got through it and uh, I realized that you know what? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what people think. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> I can't stop laughing because it's oh, like, yeah. I can't imagine someone calling you a loser. Yeah, they call me a loser. And for a second, for a second, I believed that I was. And that's the worst part, honestly. And I think, I think everybody watching can relate to that. So all I can say is if you're going to get, you should get on social media. Cause if you're not on social media, I think in the next three to five years, I, I'm not sure that you'll be in business because everything's moving online. If you don't have a social presence, I won't buy a product from somebody that's not, doesn't have a social media presence. I, I would never join it as someone's business uh, that doesn't have some kind of an online presence. I, I need, I need to see a window into who you are, but you're going to have to give up some things like approval addiction. But I'll tell you what, all jokes aside, it's been the best personal development journey in my life mm -hmm. because you see some of the things that people say now and it, it, it's not a lot, but it, once in a while we get a comment and you scratch your head on whatever. But to think about how far I've come in that regard, mm -hmm. now it's like you see it and it's you like, you're like, oh my God, four seconds later, I don't think about it. Yeah. Where before it was like four weeks, I'd yeah. still be thinking about it. Well, I've had negative comments before too and I'm like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you obsess over it, right? Yeah. But in the grand scheme of things, it's one person yeah. in billions of people on this planet right. like who's it's just trying person. to hurt you, which makes no sense. The, the probably Terrible barely knows person. It, right? Totally. So that was my start. Um, obviously, it's one, been one of the best things I've ever done. So you got to get on social media. You got to build an online brand. Building an online brand uh, is very, very important moving forward. So if you got questions on how to build an online brand, reach out to me. I have different programs, platforms company that I work with that I can direct you to. Uh, but if you're watching this and you do not have an online presence, you have to absolutely get online immediately start now because five years from now, that person will thank you for getting on it today. So don't let negative people hold you back. Awesome. Great job, Steve. Those Thanks. are all my questions. Thank you. All right, you guys, that was another segment of Ask Steve. I'm super excited you're here today. I know you got some value out of it and uh, we'll see you on the next one. If you like this training, make sure to watch this next one because I know you're going to love it.